natural about it. Don't be like, it's recording, so yay. <laughs> I knew that didn't count. It's fine, I'll edit it out. Hi, I'm Josie. And I'm Chrissy. And, and this, this is, is Better, Better Science, Science Teaching. teaching. So today what we're going to be doing is we are going to be doing a junior robotics badge. Which one are you doing? Um, we are going to be doing the first one out of three. The, uh, the program, <laughs> we will be doing the programming robots badge. So. Okay, which one are we doing again? Say again. We'll be doing that. We'll be doing the programming robots badge. The. Well, the first out of the three badges in yep. the set. The first one in the series. Okay. So some of the things that we'll be doing during, well, to be doing. The first thing that we're going to need to do is, well, to learn how robots work and kind of to discover, <laughs> discover, to discover like the robot brain, like how it, yeah, like kind of sort of how it works and why it does what it does. And just to learn about programming, try some simple programming, and then we are going to code a robot. Cool. All right. So how do robots work? What, what is a robot? Well, a robot is, well, it's a piece. You can run over there and grab it if you want to. I know you want to. <laughs> yes, yes, I do. We actually have some Lego like, Mindstorm robots. So the the Girl Scout Robotics Badge booklet describes a robot as a machine that does work automatically. And so um, normally when we think about robots, we think about things that have hardware and software. So some of it is the physical stuff, and some of it is also the instructions, the software that humans write so the robots know what to do. The way that the definition is in the Girl Scout book um, kind of leaves out the software part, uh, but it's something that we feel that is is important and that everyone should know about. Um, okay, so Josie brought a Lego Mindstorm robot to hang out with us. Does this one have a name, Josie? Um, I don't think that this one had a name. I don't think that we decided on a name. Okay, sure. yeah. A lot of our robots have names, so Josie has been in First Lego League for three years, and so most of the robots have had names. There's, there's been Cricket, <laughs> and Geo. yours is Geo, and I forget. Codette. Codette was one. So <laughs> the team frequently names the team and names the robot, and that's also why we're wearing different t-shirts today. These are our Cracking the Code <laughs> team shirt from the year that we were sponsored by a, um, by our local Girl Scout Council, which is really cool. So Okay, so how robots work, Josie? What, what does it need that makes it a robot? Well, what a robot needs is it needs, well, it needs motors to be able to complete the tasks that you, well, decide to program into it. Yeah, that's how it achieves motion, right? By having yes. motors? So what the robot does is like, what you'll do for the Mindstorm robots is well you'll get on your computer and then um certain little blocks in the mindstorm um like on the mindstorm website at so sort like of thing. the blocks really function as pieces of code and so they're parts of the instruction that go to the brain so where is the brain on your mindstorm robot well the brain on the robot is right here yeah so we can can we turn that so everybody can see it? So there's there's a piece up here that handles all that software part. And how does it communicate with other parts of the robot? Well, it communicates by, so we have these cords here. These cords connect the main center block to the other motors. And so what the motors do is they take the information and then these cords, they take the information and sort of send it along down to the motor. Then the motor, well, most motors that we have on the Mindstorm robot, um, they turn, like they do rotations. And so you can use gears and axles to, well, make the motors turn a certain distance mm -hmm. so it can do stuff. <laughs> so it looks like here you've got to touch the wheels. What other, what other things do motors do on robots? 
Well, what motors do is like, as you can see here, these are wheels. These wheels help it move. Some things that, can, that the motors can also do are, the motors can lift things. Well, like I said, they rotate. So here, this is a medium motor. We attached a gear to it, and then this gear works along with this one. It may be hard to see, but there are two gears. There's one going this way and one going this way. So when they turn, these go along with it too, and then they continue intersecting. And then this one is connected here, so that can go up and down instead of side to side. Yeah, that's really that cool. That helps it lift. So in your robot, are there other things that you can do that plug into the the brain part without it being a motor? Um, yes, there are actually sensors that it also has. Well, sensors, well, they sense things. So there are a few different sensors that we have for the Mindstorm robot. We have the color sensors, the touch sensors, the motion sensors, the gyro sensor. Is that a sensor? Yes. Yeah, that's what I thought because it helps determine angles better. So we color, touch, gyro. And there's also the sound sensor. Oh, yeah. So with, with a Lego robotics kit, you can have lots of sensors, um, which is pretty cool. Um, if you have a cell phone and you um, and you're using QR codes, if you if you're at all familiar with those, that's using basically using your phone as a sensor, so it can get an input of information from your camera and then use that use some software, the brains in your cell phone, um, to be able to do a task. And now it's pretty automatic. You don't even need a special app for it. You just use you just use your camera and your phone, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Um, so, <clears throat> all right. So these are, this is, this is a robot that has hardware and software. Sometimes with Lego robotics, we use, um, passive devices that don't require software, but still function automatically. So we may pull those out, but that's not part of the requirements for this badge. Um, but we wanted to learn a little bit about how software works. And so if you aren't part of a robotics team and you don't have familiar, any, any kind of um, experience using coding, we wanted to start out with an activity that you can do at home. You know, so guys, watching a YouTube video does not get you a badge. You have to do the activities. <laughs> so we have an activity that we want to show you that's great for lunchtime. Are you ready? Did we decide who was going to be who? Yeah. Am I the programmer or are you the programmer? You're the programmer. Okay. So what this activity is... I'm the programmer. <laughs> so what this... Well, for example, like if we use... Well, this is going to be kind of like programming, but more vocal. So like, you know how sometimes like you'll ask your family members for like a favor, like, Hey mom, can you, um, can you help? I don't know. Like, can you help pick... Can you help me get my shoes or something? I don't know. No, that's fine. So what you can do get is, <laughs> so what you, <laughs> I don't need my shoes right now. Stop telling jokes. Okay. <laughs> so what Josie's trying to say is that rather than typing up code that we're going to send to a computer, what we're going to do is practice giving specific instructions so that um, the, the, the robot, Josie's going to pretend to be the robot, um, so the robot knows what they need to do. And I have to make sure as the programmer that I give her really good instructions. Now, I will let you know that we have played this game before. I'm a little nervous. It is kind of fun. It's going to be fine. So all that I'm going to do is I am going to instruct my robot on how to make a peanut butter sandwich. And it's peanut butter, not peanut butter and jelly, because... We don't have any jelly. <laughs> okay, so. So you can use jelly, but just we don't yeah, have jelly. Yeah, you know, right you now. can add some extra complexity and that's fine. <laughs> yeah. All right, so Josie, are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Um, robot, please take the ceramic plate and put it on the table in front of you. Okay, robot, please pick up the bread. Okay, um, put some bread on your plate. 
Oh, that's not what I meant. Okay, um, robot, open the bread. And be careful, robot. I do not want you to drop it on your lap. Please, robot, remove two slices of bread. I bet you never thought about the recipe for sandwiches before. <clears throat> okay, robot, put, um, the, put the two slices of bread on the plate. And no, 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 stop, 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 robot, stop, stop, stop. Remove the loaf of bread from your plate. No, remove the loaf, yes. Okay, robot, put the two bread slices onto the plate. Um, robot, please retrieve the peanut butter. Okay, um, put the peanut butter on the bread. Oh no, oh my coding. Okay, um, robot, please pick up the peanut butter. Okay, robot, take the lid off the peanut butter. You can use your other, other motor. Robot. Um, put the lid on the table. Pick up the knife. Um, put the knife in the peanut butter jar. Um, <laughs> rotate your arm to scoop some peanut butter. There you go. Um, and remove the peanut butter knife out. Okay, good. And then put the peanut butter jar down on the table. Just the jar. And then I want you to, please robot, take the knife and spread it on one slide side of one piece of bread. Oh, good job, Robot. Can you um can you repeat that action, please? Okay. Um, Robot, can you can oh please stop repeating the action. Robot, can you please rotate the knife so that the other yeah, and then repeat repeat the spread. No, okay, just Rotate it 90 degrees and stop. Okay, good. So, um, no, that's too far. <laughs> go back 45, or go back 90 degrees. I bet 180. <laughs> okay, can you, can you spread the peanut butter, push the knife onto the bread gently, leaving the peanut butter behind. Okay, now, and pull the knife across the bread. Very good. That looks like a terrible sandwich. Okay, robot, can you please put the knife down on the table gently? Don't touch the plate, robot. Okay, good job. And then um, the can. Oh, how do I tell you to do this, robot? Can you take the bottom piece of bread out from between the plate and the bread? All right, robot, flip that piece of bread over again. No, not that. <laughs> You're infuriating. You've made a terrible sandwich, robot. <laughs> it's very amusing. I don't know why. Okay, robot, can you pick up the top piece of bread? All right, robot, pick up the other piece of bread. Um, the most recent one that you've picked up, I want you to lay down on peanut butter side on the plate. She's trying to figure out how to screw this up. No, I'm trying to figure out if you said on I want or the on I want the side plate. that does not have peanut butter on the plate. Oh good. Okay. Now can you um put the other piece of bread on the on the on the the other piece of bread on the first piece of bread, carefully aligning the crusted edges. You've got sensors for that, right? Please use your eyeball sensors, robot. Oh, that's close. I mean it it's edible. It needs to have more peanut butter, though. I could have done better with my coating, huh? Would you like me to add more peanut butter? No! <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is a very fun game. So, guys, I, I highly encourage you to do this at home with your family. It's super fun. Um, make sure that you've got... You've got some stop code for your robot because you never know what crazy thing they're going to start doing. Well, do you remember when we played this once and a person ended <laughs> up like the the robot was told to put the peanut butter on the on the bread and then they were told to do it again and they were just like bashing it down. <laughs> no, what? This is this is a very traditional learn how to code things activity.
It was bad. So I've done this a bunch of times, and Josie's done it a bunch of times, too. So that's why she's very good at exasperating me. <laughs> you have to make things very literal when you're okay. a robot. So that's a really good game to do. And you can play it with other kinds of activities. So if you don't want to do it with making a sandwich, you can do it with cooking. You can do it with um, chores around the house, like like making your bed. Um, it's also fun to do it as, like, we've, I, we've set up as an obstacle course, right? If you, you set it up as an obstacle course and have pairs of people and one person has to give instructions to get the other person through the obstacle course. And it's fun to do it, like, blindfold. And so those are some other ideas that you can do, you know, if you need to use some time while we're all stuck at home. <laughs> all right. Um, and then make sure, uh, as with all these other badges, if you're doing these with us on our on our YouTube channel, Make sure that you report back to your Girl Scout leader so that they know what you've been up to and what you've done. And make sure that you share them with your troop because that's a really important um, part of Girl Scouting is sharing what you've learned with others. Okay, so our, our last thing for this um, is that you need to be able to code something. And honestly, to watch us code is probably the least educational thing that you could do to complete this step. But... What's really great is there's a really good opportunity um, to be able to do this on your own. And so in order to complete the last step for this badge, what I want you to do is go um, either Google Hour of Code or code.org, or I'll put a link below so that you can see it, um, and go do an hour of coding. Josie, you've done this before, right? Yes. Yeah. What are some good ones to look for? Well, some good ones to look for. So what the code.org is, is it's basically a website where kids and, well, adults can do some simple coding, make games, do art, various things. So some things to look out for when you're trying out the coding stuff. I think it's interesting how you're just in the car and just like... I'm, I'm an engaged listener. Go ahead. Okay, our so, code. Some ones that I like to do is I like to do the flappy bird. It's when you have to like, <laughs> so you have to set up obstacles and you have to, so you can set the speed for how fast it goes if you want it to flap mm -hmm. a short amount, a long amount. You can just make several adjustments and it'll guide you through it. One that my brother was actually playing some today is, I think it's new, there is a Minecraft version of it. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll have to ask him how that one was, but it seemed pretty fun. He yeah, really liked really it. Yeah, it's really good. A really good way to start um, to start with coding and to understand a little bit about the exasperating things that happen when you don't give specific enough instructions <laughs> in your coding. Um, but that will help you be successful in completing the 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 required activities for this badge. Um, so that's that's what you need to know about programming robots. Next. Which one's next, Josie? The next one, well, the next badge that we'll be doing is designing robots. Yep, and so we'll, um, in the description for that one, we'll have, we'll have a list of what you need, but it's gonna be great. <laughs> we'll see you soon, be safe. Be well. Bye. <laughs> okay. So much for our sandwich.